Hey everyone, in this video I will show you how to make this interactive lava effect. So here if I press the left mouse button, I can spray this water and I can freeze the lava and create this rocks like this. Even though this is a GPU effect, I can work on it and we can also jump down into the lava and get this flashing effect and we can also detect that using blueprint. If I jump back on the rock, you can see that the flashing is gone. So you can also fall down here and you can jump up like this. And you can control a lot of parameters with this. So now if I just go to the instant, I can change the color of the rock like this. Now if I go here, I can change the depth, so if I change this to 100, we can get an effect like this and if I change this to like 20, we can get lava like this and here I can change the tiling of fire to 1 and we can get and then we can get something that falls like this or I can change the fire tiling to like 2 and we can get something like this, sorry 3 and here I can change the distortion amount to like 0.5 and then Increase the depth to like 80. So we can get something like this. Then we can change the lava depth to like to minus 200. So we can get something like that. So I will change this back to like minus 80. And there's a separation value. So if I change that to like 20, you can see that it is growing here. So with that we will get something like this. I will change the suppression value to like um, 12. I can also change the roughness of the rock. So if I change this to like 0.1, it will look really wet. So if I press play, I can spray this water and the rocks look really wet like this. Uh, the water is a really simple effect. This is just a very basic particle system. And now we can also change this to snow. So now if I change this color to like a white color like this. So now we can get this snow when we freeze the lava. Like this. And you can see that the intersection point is kind of melting or it, it looks like it's melting so I will change some more settings I will change the distortion to like 0.2 and I will change the separation value to like uh, 30 and I will change the texture mask to like 1 So now it looks like this and I will change the lava depth to like minus 30. So now it kind of looks like this and you can walk through it. So this is what we are going to be making today and if you want to get the entire project file you can support me on my patreon and for five dollars you can get this project file and almost all my previous project files from there the links will be in the description below check that out also and if you are already my patron thank you very much for your support i really appreciate it so in order to follow along you need these resources i will be providing them for free you can download them from the description below. For this I am using a super high plane. So it has a lot of subdivisions. You can always use tessellation but I prefer this method of pre tessellation measure. So you can download this high plane or super high plane from the zip file. 
So one thing to do here is that just to open the super high plane and go to collision and go to collision complexity and set this to use complex collision as symbol. Then one more thing you have to do is that go to the project settings then here type in UV and hit so tick support UV from hit result and restart your engine. After that we can create the effect. So now to create the effect first I will create a render target. So go to materials and textures then render target. I will call this RT underscore lava then open it up. I will set this to 1024 by 1024. You can also set this to like 512 if you want but it will be little bit more pixelated and we can just set this to like clamp since we don't really want it to wrap around and then we can set the render target format to like RTF R8. We only want this single channel for the render target and that's all we have to do here. Then go back. Then we need to create something to draw onto the render target. So for that I will create a material and I will call this M freeze then open it up then set the blend mode to additive if you don't set this every time we paint the render target the previous information will be updated and it will be gone so every time we paint it will be just a dot not a continuous painting if you don't set this to additive then we can set the blend mode to like Unlet, then create a radial gradient. This will draw a circle like this or a disc shape. We can get a multiply and connect this here. So to get a multiply, press M and click. I now get a scalar parameter by pressing S and clicking and we can call this amount and I will set this to 1 and I will connect this to B. Now press and hold V and click so we get this vector parameter and we can call this location then get a component mask and set this to R and G because our UV only have like two coordinates R and G. We will use this location parameter to move our drawing on the plane. So connect this to the center position and for radius and for radius press and hold one and click and now get a divide node and set this value to like one and press and hold S and click so we get this scalar parameter and we can call this radius and connect this here and connect this to the radius so when we divide 1 by this radius we can actually reduce the size of the radius by increasing the radius value because it is going to be huge and it is easy to increase the value so I am doing it like this. Now we can get a scalar parameter again and we can call this density. Then I will set this value to like 0.2 and connect this to the density here and then click apply. So that's all we need to do here. So now to create the lava material right click then material and I will call this M underscore lava 
then open it up then change this to use material attributes so we get this one input and here we will right click and type in make material attribute and we can just connect this here now we can get our render target and bring it here and connect the R channel to the base color like this and click apply now just bring in your high plane like this and scale it like this uh, as big as this one like this so I'm just going to delete that and I'm just going to use the one I have so here you can set the material to this M lava one we will create an instance first so just create the instance and drag that in so now we have applied our material to our super high plane you can just bring that into the world and you can just add the material and scale it up like this so now to paint on it we need to go to the first person character now we will go to an empty place and right click and type in left mouse button so you need to disconnect the firing of the projectiles first now now we will create a new variable called freeze then just alt drag that in and we will just take this and duplicate that and when we let go we will just untick this now we need to get the event tick so type in tick then get a branch then connect it here and then get the freeze here so here when we press the left mouse button uh, we get this true so we get output from here and when it is false nothing will happen because it will be false and the output will be from here so now if it is true we will do a line trace so type in line trace by channel you can also line trace by object and stuff like that but I'm just going to do line trace by channel and here we will trace from this uh, sphere location so get this sphere and from here type in get wall location then connect this to the start then here type in get forward vector so this will show us which direction the sphere is facing and if you just multiply that unit vector with a float we can have five units from that location so we can get this uh, 600 unit away from that location and if we add that with the world location we can get 600 unit so now if I just add this vector with vector we can get 600 unit in front of this sphere so that will be the end location and here get a branch and connect this here and connect this here so now we will have a line trace and also tick trace complex and then go to event begin play and type in sequence so we can have many outputs from here 
so from here type in create dynamic material instance and for the asset we will select our m freeze asset we will just create an instance first then bring that in and we will just promote this to variable and call this m freeze reference and now when we begin play we also need to clear our render target so type in clear render target and we will set the clear color to black and select our RT lava and now we can break this hit and here I will just get another brand by pressing and holding B and clicking and from the hit component we can type in tag and get has component tag and connect this here and here we will name this lava and we can go to the world and select the plane and here you can select the plane and type in component tag here and add and we can name this lava so this name should be same as this one now when we hit the lava now when we hit the lava we can move our freeze brush so we can drag that in and type in set vector parameter and from true we can just change the parameter name to this a location name so we will change this to location then we will break this value then then from here we can type in find collision uv then we can also break this and connect the x value to r and the y value to b and the y value to g now we will type in draw to render target and for the test or render target we will get our RT lava and for the material we will get our M freeze reference and if I compile and if I go to the instance I will set the radius to like 0.45 and now if I press play and if I fire everything is white so we can just reduce the radius by a bit I will set this to like thousand and now if I try to paint you can see that it is very small so now I will set that value to like hundred or something like that and let's see how big it is it is still really small so I will change this value to like 20 and if I press play and now it's not really that bad so here I will set the hardness to like 0.1 and the amount to 7 So now if I press the left mouse button I can draw on the render target. You can also use runtime virtual texture to do something like this similar to this. Now to create the rest of the lava we will go back to the lava material and here we will just duplicate this and here we will type in blend material attributes and now disconnect this and connect this to the alpha here since the positions we paint will be the rock we will connect 
this one to B and this will have our rock material. So connect this to the lava here also. Now we will get some texture from the starter content. We need this water normal, this T rock slate, this T rock slate diffuse, this rock basalt texture, um, this rock basalt texture also. Then we need this fire texture. We also need this stone pebbles texture, this one. And now bring that into the material like this. So now we have a lot of materials. So first I will just connect this fire texture to base color. Maybe we don't really need the slate texture. I, I will just use the basalt texture for this also. So here I will just get a UV coordinate by pressing holding U and clicking. And I will get a multiply. And connect this here. And connect this to the UV here. And get a scalar parameter by pressing holding S and clicking. And I will call this rock tiling. And I will connect this here. And I will get another multiply. And I will connect this here. And I will change this to like 2. Then I will just duplicate this. And I will connect this here. And I will get a multiply. And I will connect this here. And connect this here. And I will get another multiply. And connect this here. So this will give us some random variations. And we will get a vector parameter by pressing only V and clicking. So we get this vector parameter. And we will call this row color. And connect this to B and connect this to the base color here and now for the normal map we will just duplicate this and we will connect this here and connect this here and we will add both of the normal maps together so we will get some more random variations And I will connect this to the normal here and I will change the rock tiling to like 1. And we need to raise this up. So this will be our rock and we need to raise this up from the world. So to do that we will get a constant 3 and change the B value to like 1. Normally we can also use a vertex normal and multiply that with this b value but since this is a plane we can just use a constant 3 with a 1 value for the b and we can get a multiply so this will push the vertices up since the blue c value is pointing up it will push all the vertices up and not sideways so we can connect this to the multiply here and we can connect this to the world position since this is a pre-tessellated mesh we are using and now we will get a scalar parameter and we will call this height and we can call this rock height and connect this to B and we will set this value to like 100 or 90 and click apply now if I press play and try to paint you can see that I can paint this rock and the lava is in the flow since if you look at the render target you can see that the red area is actually white color it has a value of 1 and since we are using a blend material attributes when we paint the red color in we will get the input from the B as output. So wherever we paint, we get the rock. So for the rock, 
I will give a specular value of 1 since it will be a bit shiny and the roughness I will get a scalar parameter and I will call this rock roughness and maybe I will give a value of 0.6 and connect this to the roughness so now if we look at it you can see that it's a bit shiny So we can control all these parameters in the instance by the way. So if you want to give rock some color, you can just change the rock color to like white or green or something like that if you want. We can have a rock like this if you want. We can also change the rock tiling like two or three. And we get something like this. We can also change the height like this. I will just set this to like 90 for now. Now we will create our lava material. So for that, just bring it here. And I will just drag all of this down. And from here, I will just bring this texture up like this. So here first we will create the distortion. So We'll just get the water normal here and we will get a UV coordinate. Then we will get a multiply and we will get and we will connect this to the multiply here and we will get a scalar parameter and we will call this distort scale. I will default this to one and connect this to the multiply here. I now get a panel. And connect this to the coordinate and connect this to the UV and change this value to like negative point zero one and duplicate that and get a multiply. So now we will just scale this by two so we can get some random mixing. Then here for the panel we will give a value of 0 0.01 and negative point zero two. So here we will change the value to like point zero two six. And now we will add them both together like this. Now we can get a component mask like this. Now we can control the distort amount by getting a multiply. I'm getting a scalar parameter and we can call this distort amount and now we can connect this to the B here and now we can duplicate this fire texture and we can get a UV so now we can get an add node by pressing holding A and clicking anything you want you can just right click and type in here and now connect this multiply to the add here and now get a panel and get another panel by pressing holding P and clicking and connect this here and connect this to the UV and here first we will just multiply this by 2 and connect this to the coordinate here and connect this to the UV here. Now for this panel we will give a value of 0 0.01 and 0 0.03 and for this panel we will give a value of 0 0.03 and 0 0.01 and now we will just multiply them together like this then we will just desaturate them so this is for the MEC and here and here we can get something called Beer's Law so it's just like a power node but it will give us some interesting results and here I will just get a scalar parameter and I will call this depth 
and I will default this to like 50 and connect this to the depth scale and now get a multiply and connect this here and get a vector parameter and we will call this lava MSC and we will connect this to the B here and we can connect this to the MSC color here and now we can click apply so before that we need to get another multiply and connect that here and connect this here and get a scalar parameter and we can call this fire tiling and I will just default this to 1 also and now connect this to B and click apply and if I go to the map we get something like this now if I go to the distort amount and change that value to like 0.5 we can get this nice distortion effect. I will change this value to like 2 or 0 0.1. So we get something like this. Now I can change the fire tiling to like 2 or 3. So now we have something like this. And we can change the distortion scale also to 0 0.1 or like 10. 5, 20 or 2, I will leave it at 4 for now and now if I go to the lava MC and if I change this to a red color and increase the brightness we can get something like this or something like this. Now I can change the depth value to like 1000 or 500 or 200 or something like that and we can get some interesting result like this but we don't really want this we will fix that later so now we need to darken the lava a bit and also work on the separation between the lava and the rock and for the separation we can just duplicate this render target and bring it here now get a power node and I will get a scalar parameter and I will call this separation and I will connect this to the exponent and I will give a value of 1 for now and I will just multiply this with this one and connect this here and I will connect this to the MC color and now I will just get a look and connect this to the roughness and 1 minus this and connect this to the specular and I will just connect this R to the alpha here like this without the power now we will work on making this a bit more darker so now we will work on making this a bit more darker. So for that we need this cobblestone texture and here we will just get a texture coordinate and a multiply and we will connect this to the multiply here and now we will get a scalar parameter and we will call this cobble scale and connect this to B and now get a panel by pressing and holding P and clicking and now we can just connect this to the coordinate and we can give a value of 0 0.01 and we can change this value to like 0 0.02 and connect this to the UV and we can get the red channel and we can type in subtract and now we can call this darken and connect this to the B then we will just saturate this because we don't really want this value going below 0 or above 1 and now we can get a power node 
and we can get a scalar parameter and we can call this darken power we can multiply this with the MEC after the Bayer's law so connect this to the multiply and connect this here and just connect this here like this and now we will just duplicate this to extra samples and bring it here and we will just connect this here and connect this here and we can multiply them together like this and now we will get a lurk and connect this to A and now we can connect this multiply to B and for the alpha we will get the cobblestone texture and we will connect this to the alpha here and now we will get another multiply and we will connect this to A and we can connect this to the R channel here and connect this to the base color again so this will make it a bit more darker so it's very dark I will change the cobalt scale to 1 I will change the darken value to like 1 I will change the darken power to 2 I will change the separation to 2 again now I can change the darken to point negative 1 here we need to 1 minus this so the dark part will be MSC so now we have something like this now we can increase the lava's color so we will fix this later so first we will give it a normal map also so just get the rock basalt texture then duplicate that then connect this here and connect this here then get an add node and connect this here and connect this here also now get a multiply node and then connect this with the cobblestone so our cobblestone texture will also affect the normal map and now connect this to the normal like this and click apply now we have something like this I can change the darken value to like negative 2 so now we also have to go here and move this here and get a lurk and connect this to the B and connect this to the B here and now we need to connect this to the alpha since when this is a black color or a darker color we don't really want the distortion happening so now click apply so it looks a bit better now I will change the depth to like 80 and I will change this color to like a red I will change the cobalt scale to like 0.1 or like 10 2 and I can change the darken value to like negative 1 and now I can just change the color to like red and I will increase the value to like 200 or like 100 now I will change the fire tiling to like 1 and also I will change the depth to like 120 maybe I'm just trying to find a good color here maybe this is a good color and now I will change the distortion scale to like 2 or like 1 
maybe two, and I will uh, decrease the distortion amount by amount to point zero five, so like zero. Maybe I will change this to like point zero two. I think that's a better value. So now it's looking like lava. So you can obviously play around with all of these values if you want. So now if I go here, if I try to paint, so here you can see that. So here if I change the height to like 120, and now if I press play, and if I paint it, I am falling into it. See, there is no collision. So that's what we are going to be creating next. But before that, I will just change the row color to like a white or gray scale color like this one. So if you are going for like a black color, then you don't really want to use these two textures just a normal map will work so if i just connect this to the base color you can save one texture sample with this so if i click apply it will still look the same i can just make it darker and here for the separation i can give a value like 20 or like 0.01 or 0 0.09 I think 0 0.01 was better or 0 0.001 now we can set this value to like 1 so we get a nice looking lava like this so this is what we want you can also increase the brightness like this and now with this you can increase the depth so we get something like this. Now we can change the darken value to like negative 2. So now we will create the collision. Right now you can see that we are going through the rock. And we don't really want that. So we will create the collision for this rock. So to do that we are going to create a mesh grid where the rock is forming. So there are different ways to do it. I think the most optimal way is to create a static mesh component for an instance static mesh. Here we are just going to create a actor that we will spawn in a grid. So right click, then blueprint class, then actor. I will call this BP underscore wall. Then open it up. Then here we can add a plane like this. And now we will go to the first person character. And here we will get a sequence node. And now here we will type in spawn actor from class. Then we will just add our BP1. Then we can just split this and we can just connect this location to the spawn location. And if I press play and if I press, nothing is happening. So I think it is spawning, but below that. So here we are just going to add a C offset. So it will be a little bit higher. So drag from location and type in plus, then vector plus vector. And here I will give a value of 50. Now if I press play and if I press, you can see that I am spawning this cubes all over the world. They are even 
spawning on top of each other and here I will just type in print and connect this to the string so we can see that how many of this uh, cubes are spawning if I press you can see that a lot of walls are being created and they are even overlapping each other and they are not arranged in a grid so to make them arrange in a grid we can go to the third person character then here type in vector snapped to grid then connect this here and connect this to the location and this in grid size should be the size of the plane so in our case the size of the plane is like 100 units so we can give that here as 100 so now if I press play see I can spawn this cubes but after I spawn them I cannot draw on it but I can walk over it so I will make it a bit more higher so in order to make it a bit more higher you can just increase this value to like 100 so now if I press you can see that it is higher and I can fall down and also jump on it so after I paint the cube I cannot really paint the lava so in order to fix that we can go to the BP wall then here we can type in visibility and untick that and now if I press play and if I just click I can paint on it and also see I can walk on it but there is still a problem it is blocking our painting sometimes see so in order to fix that we can go to the BB wall again and we can go to the plane and then we can go to the collision preset and change that to custom and just for the visibility tick ignore so our visibility trace isn't hitting it now if I press I can paint wherever I want so now the problem is that if I keep pressing like this there is more and more walls being created like that so we don't really want that we don't really want them to overlap so in order to fix that we can go to the first person character again and here we can just duplicate the line trace and bring it here and connect this here and connect this here now here we can just duplicate this two times so the start location should be like from 150 and now for the end location we will just duplicate this and connect this here and make this negative 150 and connect this to the end here now I will just turn on the debug for one frame now if I press you can see the debug and it is still spawning so here you can see that if I press it is still spawning a lot of wall blueprints so in order to prevent that we can go here and type in and here we can just break this and from hit actor we can type in cast to bp wall and if the casting fails that means that we are not hitting a bp wall actor so we can spawn a bp wall actor so we can spawn a wall actor at that position uh, before that we can also add a branch to see if it, to see if we are hitting something so we can spawn that now if i press play and press the 
I can. It is still spawning stuff. Oh, here you are not really supposed to use a line trace. Just delete that. So here we have to get line trace for object. And we can connect this here. And connect this here. And connect this here. And connect this to the hit. And connect this to the start. And connect this to the end. And for the object type, we can just uh, promote this to a variable. And we can call this type. Then if you combine, you can add type here and change this to world dynamic since we have an actor here. Now if I press play and press this, you can see that only one wall is being created at a position. So we can work on it like this. If you look at the left right hand corner, you can see that only one wall is being created at a place. So that's what we want. So now that we have the lava and the collision working, I will just quickly go over how I got the rest of the stuff working, like the water and the snow and the detection, etc. So if you want to get the entire project file, you can download it from Patreon. But since this is a very long tutorial, I'm just going to quickly go over all of it. So in order to get the detection working, you need to get a box trigger from here like this. Then all you have to do is like get the trigger and then uh, set the scale like this. So you can make it bigger or smaller. So if I just increase the scale you can see that it is getting bigger and smaller and here also you can make it big and small like this so put that in the lava and now we can go to the first person character then we can select the capsule component then here we can go to on begin overlap and here you can see that if it is hitting the trigger box we do a print screen called in lava and if i just press play and just jump in you can see that i can see in lava and you can also see this uh, pulsing effect happening and we can see also a heat haze effect in the world sometimes. So in order to create that, we need to add a post post volume like this one, a small one. You can get that from post process and then bring that in. So one thing to remember here is that you don't really pick infinite bound because we just want it to affect the region inside the cube now we just have to create this post process material so if i open it up you can see that it is a very simple material so this is the same thing we done before and then multiply that and mask that and the distortion we did that before then get a texture coordinate and add that to a scene texture post process input zero so to get that you can type in scene You can type in scene texture. Then here you can change this to post process input zero. And then get an RGBA mask. Then get a lerp and another lerp. And connect this to A like this. And connect this to the B here like this. And connect this here to A. And for the B here, we need to get a sign remap node and a time node like this. So type in time, we can get a time node and a sign remap node. Then we need to mask that by R. Then we will get a parameter called color and multiply that. 
and we will just multiply that with this one and connect that to B here and connect that to B here and get an MC color and we will connect this to the MC color. So if you can find this a node working, you need to set this to a post process domain here in the material domain and here we need to go to blendable and change this to before tone mapping if you have any issues like shimmering or anything like that then we can get a radial gradient exponential this will just create that a disk shape but here we are inverting it so we get this shape in the sides like we can get this effect in the sides so that's what it is doing here because it is inverted the white portion will be at the sides and the black portion will be at the center so these are the values for radius and density and here we are using an alpha value to learn between the normal post process output and the one with the glowing rings so if the alpha is one we will get the output from here that output have this color at the ends because of this mask and we connect that to the MSC color. So for this alpha we need to create a PC data parameter collection. So for that right click then go to material instance then material parameter collection then we can just add like a scalar parameter called alpha. So I have created that here called alpha then we can set that value using a timeline. So here this timeline is a float track that is of length 0.4 and it goes from 0 at 0 time to 1 at 0.4 time. So we are just setting that scalar parameter using a set scalar parameter value node just select the scalar parameter and select the parameter name here and connect that to the alpha so this will animate the value between 0 and 1 so when this alpha value is 0 we will get the output from A from the left which is a normal post process output with a little bit of heat haze because of this normal map and when the alpha is 1 we get the side with the glowing effect so just connect that to the MSC color then create an instance and add that to your second post process volume here in the post process material just add this and asset reference then add that so when the character jumps into the trigger box it will just play the timeline from start and the alpha goes from 0 to 1 so we get that effect and when the character NC overlap we will play it from reverse so the value goes from 1 to 0 so it will reverse so that's what happening here so if I just create some rocks and jump in and if I jump into the lava you can see the effect and if I jump here I cannot see that effect so sometimes you don't really even have to use the trigger box you can actually use the collision from the plane also if you want. Now here we can just set this separation to like 0 or 1 or like 1 and then we can change the rock color to like a blue color like this and now if I just paint we get kind of a snow like effect here. You can also change the material to a subsurface material by changing the shading model in the material. So there is an option for that here. The shading model you can change. So that's how we get this snow. Now to create the water, you need two textures like this. So this water base color and the water normal. Then you need to create a material like this. So the water base color is here and the normal is here multiply the green channel or the red channel it doesn't really matter since this is a grayscale image so multiply that here and connect this to the normal map since we are using refraction we need the normal map so connect that like this so it will just soften the edge of the 
numeral map a bit then 1 minus this and connect this to the alpha so here we need the bright portion to have more refraction and the and the darker portion will have a refractive index of air which is kind of close to 1 and the white portions will have the refractive index of water so when we 1 minus that it will just invert that so here you can see that the darker values at the middle and we will get the output from A and we will get the input from A as output if the alpha value is 0. So here A is 1.33 which is like the refractive index of water I think. So connect that like that then here we have a depth sphere and a multiply. So what this depth sphere does is that if this uh, particle kind of come close to another mesh it will kind of fade that particle so we don't really have a harsh edge then we will multiply that with a particle color node so if you want any of this node here you can just right click and search for it like this particle color etc uh, this is called a 1 minus node so connect the alpha to the multiply and connect that to the opacity so this will allow us to control the opacity of the material from the particle system so this will bring the color data of the particle system to the material and now we will just multiply it with this smoke texture this smoke texture can be found in the starter content it is called T smoke tiled then multiply that with the particle color then add that to the scene color just to give some more color to the scene so it doesn't really completely look white then you can just click apply also one thing to notice here is that you have to set this um, you have to set the blend mode to translucent and the shading model to unlit then you can click apply so we have this water material then to create the water you can just right click then go to fx then niagara system then click next then fountain then click add and click finish then I will call this fx water then open it up then I will set this to a GPU particle because we need a lot of them so here the fixed bound will make the particles not disappear when we are not looking directly at it now here in the spawn count we can change this to like 200 and here for the sprite render we can get this water material and add that so now we get something like this now we can go to the initialize particle and set the lifetime to 2 and 3 and for the sprite scale we can just pick sprite scale and here we can uh, click this arrow and type in float and vector 2d from float and change this value to like 150 so we get something like this now we need to increase the velocity so go to the cone and change the maximum velocity to like 1200 and now change the maximum velocity to like 1200 like this then change the minimum velocity to like 800 now we will just change the axis to x and change the c value to like 0 so now we get a water like effect like this now in order to make the sprites a bit smaller at the end we can just add particle update and type in scale scale sprite size and now we can just click this and type in float and get vector 2d from float now here click this arrow again and type in curve float from curve and now click this point and change the value of that to like point 1 then click the point at time is equal to 1 and change that value to like 1 so we get something like this now click combine and now we can bring that into our first person character so just go here and go to the sphere here and press add component and type in Niagara and select Niagara particle system then here we can just select that and add that in 
So now if I press play, you can see that it is already spawning the particle. So in order to prevent that, we can go here and untick auto activate and we can activate this manually. So for that we can go to the event graph. Then here at left mouse button, you can bring that in and type in activate. And we will just tick in reset, so it will reset the particle. Now when we release the left mouse button, we can just deactivate it. So now if I press play, now if I press the mouse button, you can see that I am spawning the water particle. And I can jump on the rocks I create. And I can also jump into the lava and I can jump up to the rocks. So I think that's it for the tutorial guys. Thanks for watching. And if you want to download the entire project files, you can support me on my Patreon. Thank you.